Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot by Alexander Pope. An epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot is addressed to Pope's friend John Arbuthnot by Pope. This epistle is an apology in which Pope defends his works against the attacks of his detractors, particularly the writers Lady Mary Wortley, Montauk, Joseph Addison and John and Lord Hervey. Pope actually satirizes coverly critics, hypocritical pedants, insipid patrons of the arts and corrupt psychophants and it caricatures Pope's contemporaries. Pope was born in the year 1688 where people were torn between the extremes of religion, society and politics. Pope is famous for writing satires. Pope and his friends were fondly named as Scriblerians. Dr. Arbuthnot, who was hopelessly ill and a very close friend of Pope, wrote to Pope that he should be careful while attacking others. Pope wrote this poem as a reply to him in 1734. This poem attacks Pope's detractors and defends Pope's characters and career. The poem is in seven parts. The first part is opened with Pope ordering John, a servant, to shut the door. Pope is afraid of letting in the budding poets who are like dogs. He asks John to tie the knocker of the door. He thinks that the mental institutions like Bedlam and Parnassus are let loose in the road. He finds the poets with papers in their hands and fire in their eyes. Pope is not left alone. Wherever he goes, he is followed by the budding poets. They come into his house by climbing the wall and shrubs. They get into his chariot and into his boat. They do not even leave him to pray. Everyone blames Pope in some way or the other. All people come to Twitnam, that is Pope's house, to scold him. Pope finally addresses Dr. Arbatsnar as a friend of my life. Pope finds his friend's illness and the troublesome poets as a plague. Pope is confused on what to do and what not to do. If he appreciated their poet, poetry, they overflow with more poems. If he says something negative about their poetry, they feel hurt. Pope gives advice of Horace to the new poets. He asks them to wait for nine years before publishing a poem. The writers are unable to accept this advice. They ask Pope to make some corrections in their poem. They also try to bribe him. Some poets even blackmail him. The second part of the poem talks about the dangers of being popular. Pope elaborates on the comparison of Midas. He ridicules the poetators by using Midas' image, which ultimately represents unreliability. Pope scolds a few poets like Colley, Harvey, Babis, Bishop Phillips and Sappho. At this point, Arbuthnot warns Pope not to use names in his poem. He advises Pope to be prudent. Arbuthnot ridicules Pope that he is twice as tall as Pope, but he never uses any names. Pope is angry again. He is willing to be honest. He claims that he would not be called as cruel when he calls a fool as a fool. He then talks about how a few dramatists approach him to recommend scripts which are rejected by the theatres and production companies. They all try to flatter Pope. Some say that Pope's nose is like Ovid's and they compare Pope with Hercules and Alexander the Great. Pope does not listen to such flattery. He calls himself as an ordinary man. The third part talks about Pope's life as a writer. He starts explaining why he writes. He says that he wrote not out of any compulsion. He found it hard to learn numbers but it was not hard for him to write poetry. Nobody asked him to write poetry, but he did it by himself. He writes because his friends like Swift, Granville, Congreve and others enjoyed reading his poetry. He did not write poems for his personal reason, like loving his wife. Arbuthnot asks why Pope publishes his works. Pope says that because his friends enjoyed reading his poetry, they praised his works. Even Dryden encourages Pope to write and publish poems, so Pope published them. The fourth part 
the poem discusses about why Pope attacks other poets through his satire. Pope says that he does not care a little for those who find fault with him. He calls them as donkeys and fools. He sometimes tried to be friendly with them. He tried to take them out for a dinner. In spite of all these cheap critics criticize him. Pope says that if their criticism is correct, he would readily accept it. Pope's satire is Ambrose Phillips. Ambrose is a plagiarist. He copies works from Greek literature and earns money. If only he attempted to be original, he will not cross eight lines a year. Pope then criticizes Addison. Addison, according to Pope, is a genius. He is a good writer. His defect is that he wants to dominate literary world. He thinks that he is the greatest of all writers. Pope calls Addison a coward because Addison attacks many writers but he fears being attacked by them. Lord Halifax is attacked next. Lord Halifax loves being flattered. He helps the poetasters who flatter him. Fifth part describes Pope's current attitude towards life and career. Pope asks the poetasters to let him live in a peaceful manner. He says that he lives in debt. He is someone normal who prays to God regularly. He says that only liars will fear his satire and attacks. A man of good intention or honest behavior need not fear him. In the sixth part, Pope attacks Lord Harvey in the name Sporus. When Arbuthnot hears the name Sporus, he starts scolding him. Sporus is a man who drinks the milk of a donkey. He is capable only of killing a butterfly with his wheels. He is such a senseless person that he is not able to distinguish satire and other kinds of poem. If Pope is a paragon of independent judgment, Harvey is a man who will say anything to please the people at court and in government. He values glamour, sensual pleasure and social flaming. Harvey was also homosexual. Harvey is not only a man-woman but an animal demon, a shape-changer like Satan. The seventh part Pope's final draft of a self-portrait sums up the virtues he wants Arbuthnot to believe he has. Pope says that he has never been a worshipper of fortune. He is bold and courageous. He has never flattered anyone for such reasons, uh, like anything to please himself. Uh. He attacks his enemies and critics. Uh. He claims that he was brought up well by his parents. Uh. His parents are peace-loving. They are good citizens of England. They led a happy domestic life. Pope also wants to live a similar life. He concludes the poem by praying that Arbuthnot should lead a happy, peaceful and prosperous life. This is the summary. If you want to add on anything to what I have said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe and support. Thank you.